what is the realistic future of the car? Current developments, trend analysis, and research all indicate an imminent rise of the electric and even the autonomous vehicle. The battle of manual versus autonomous is about to commence. So will we drive in the future? Or will we be driven? Manual driving is about the fun and freedom of driving itself. While autonomous driving is really about time management, efficiency, even safety. I argue that the future car will have both. It will have the best of both worlds. It will have two modes, which I like to call active and passive driving. While actively driving, the user is in control, and the car assists the user, for example, through systems like automated braking systems or adaptive cruise control, things we already have right now. Passive driving means that the car is in control and the user assists the car through, for example, setting the route. This is autonomous driving. This future car will have the best of both worlds. It will have the advantages of autonomous driving without taking away the freedom of the user. Every autonomous car, as envisioned by car makers, is electric. So where does that put the combustion engine? Well, the electric car has many advantages over the combustion engine, especially towards sustainability. But what I really want to discuss is best explained through a comparison. I'm going to compare the ignition sequence of the Austin Healey 3000 Mark III, nailed it, to that of the Tesla Model S. The Austin Healey is a very beautiful and elegant car, but how would you start a car like this? Well, let's go through the motions. You get in, you insert the key, you push the clutch, you fiddle with the choke if needed, you set the gearbox to your preferred mode, which is either normal or overdrive, you rotate that key, feel a distinct click, and at that moment, the car roars to life. Let's listen. Now let's compare this to the Tesla Model S, which is also a very beautiful car. It's also crazy to drive. Now how would we start this car? Well, I get in, and I push the brake. That's it. I start the car by pushing the brake. And nothing actually happens at the moment I push the brake, because the car was already on when I got in. The screens are on, and the only thing that changes is that the speedometer appears, so I know that the car is actually ready to go. Now let's compare this quickly to the BMW i8, um, which is a hybrid-powered Batmobile, as you can see. It's completely crazy. How would a car like this start? Well, you get in, you push the brake, and you push a start button. I know, pinnacle of creativity. But what happens next, it really blows my mind. Let's, let's listen to what happens when you start this monster. Yeah, that was the startup sequence of this magnificent beast. Um, the beeping was because I didn't plug in my seatbelt. <laughs> so, where is the passion in all of that? Where is the life that these car manufacturers like to show through their logos? Why is the electric car a machine, while the combustion engine is an animal? It is really hard to form a bond with the car when they all feel like the same product. The combustion engine car has character, and I want for the loss of this character when moving to the electric car. So over the past six months, I've worked with a team of industrial design students here at the university in Eindhoven on this very thing, exploring life and the electric car through design. And through an iterative process, we designed a new key, which I brought. We designed this key, which is fragile, tangible, valuable, and above all, vital to the function of the car. This key not only starts the car, but it makes a physical connection between the battery of the car and the engine. And it will afterwards visualize the flow of electricity. 
Now, how would the car start with a key like this? Well, let's go through the motions. You get in, and you insert the key in the center of the dashboard. And even though you need to pressure it, it is absorbed and guided into place by the car. And at the moment that it's fully aligned with the dashboard, you feel a distinct click. At that very moment, light shoots through this key and through your interior as you hear your fans inhale a subtle but sharp breath of air. Your dashboard lights up and the headlights open up to light up your driveway. The car has come to life. And while you're driving off, you look back at this key and you see it pulsating in place in the center of the car. It is the heart of the car. So what is the realistic future of the car? I don't know. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking to you right now. That's the reason for this exploration and the reason for this design. To inspire the automotive industry, or any industry for that matter, to use this technological advancement in a way that doesn't reduce the product to the status of a mere machine. And this works in other fields as well. Let's, for example, look at the wristwatch. Watches often become heirlooms that are passed down from generation to generation. All the while, its value increases. Stories are added, its character grows richer. This will never happen with the current smartwatch, because it seems to be missing that crucial thing that makes us fall in love with it, character. Technological advancements have the opportunity to make products better, more stable, quicker, quieter, cheaper. But they can also make them replaceable, indistinguishable, and boring. So whatever you do, whether you're a designer, an engineer, or a consumer, don't lose character. <laughs>